his Mustang bullet is amazing. And today I have something amazing to tell you. You know, I thought about the bullet, how quickly a bullet moves. Today I have the most amazing bullet fast hack to improve your paint correction game, to make you so much more money, to give you time with your family. It is going to so change your life when it comes to paint correction. You might think I'm overselling this. It has saved me 10 hours a job. It's a polishing tip that I think has absolutely so dramatically changed my life and I wanna share it with you. How do I teach the system that I can't even take credit for? The only way I can do it is with the buffing liquids that I was taught with. H9 from Koch Chemie. Man, is this a beast. It cuts like Paul Bunyan in his prime. But as it finishes down, as a diminishing abrasive, it becomes translucent. And then its cut level starts to match that of a polish. That's a little tease, but we're gonna leave that there. You're gonna use this polish. So of course, this is a two-step system, right? M3, micro cut from Koch Chemie. I love this line. I learned this entire process in Atlanta and we're gonna to get to that in just a bit. I don't care what you cut with. You can cut with a red pad, H9, red pad, that's the system. Or you can cut with microfiber, which is what I prefer to do. Just depends on the moment. But what you actually need, absolutely unequivocally, don't mess around with this, is a purple polishing pad. Now, can you do this with another set of chemicals and polishing pads? Sure, it's just the system that I know that I'm trying to translate and bring to you. Purple polishing pad from Koch Chemie paired with their purple polish. That's what you're gonna need. So, just to recap, H9, M3, cutting pad of your choice, and purple pad from the German Wonders, Koch Chemie. Andy, be cool. Self-explanatory, dude, it spells itself. When I tell you I'm gonna <laughs> teach you this system, I'm actually gonna let the teacher do the teaching. I met this dude Andy Be Cool at a Koch Chemie event in Atlanta. I was watching some of the other guys play with the buffing liquids, and then I jumped in myself. And then a cosmic moment brought us together. And I say this because I learned the best paint correction hack that I have ever received. Wait, dude, it's, it's all about your technique, man. I mean, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, right? And we all have different ways to cut and polish, right? I, we all do what works for us. I was taught Nice slow motion, make sure you have pad rotation. Maybe stay on speed three or four on your dual action machine. Uh, I use a Rupes Mark II. This is, this is trashed over here. But Mr. Cool, he had something for me that blew my mind. It's, it's, it's all mad science, right? Through years of experience, and he says, knowing the Koch Chemie products, he figured this out. And now let's start with the premise that you've compounded with the H9 compound until you see that translucent see-through film along your paint panel. Um, it's just, it's already broken down, um, and I feel it just, it, it skips us through of having to wipe this off right now. Basically, it's just using what you got there to get the job done faster. And this next step is fast and efficient. My thinking is, this is a diminishing abrasive compound. So, so this started off as a, say a 10, whatever, whatever the ratings are. Now it's about a three. This is coming in at about a four, gonna finish down to a zero. So instead of running that extra step of having to wipe this down. Instead of that extra step, he says, of taking your towel, wiping the compound off the paint. This is the money maker. Here's what he showed me how to do. You take your purple polishing pad, you put it on your dual action polisher, you grab your M3, again, translucent compound, not wiping it off the paint, and you get ready to polish. So what I'll do is I'll prime this pad, rub it all in here, blow the pad back out. Even though this is only a four cut abrasive, I still don't want a ton of that abrasive on the, on the thing. That's why I'm going so thin. Guys, at this point, I'm incredulous. I am in disbelief. What the heck's he doing? He's polishing on speed six on his dual action polisher. He's using a flex force rotation, but as you're gonna see, pad rotation doesn't even matter. He's talking about wiggling out the scratches. He's breaking all the rules. Not only is he polishing on speed six, but I always thought when I got tick marks on the paint, and if you've ever done paint correction, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's shiny, but up close, the dual action polisher leaves all these little ticks and it drives you crazy if you're like me. I'm like, wouldn't you want more lubrication? Wouldn't you want this whole thing coated in a nice, juicy, oily film? Four dots? Here's what he had to say. Especially when it comes to finishing. What's happening is, is that's creating more drag, okay? 
when you're putting that much product on, it's creating drag. So essentially what happens is, if you say the back of my hand is the, uh, is the backing plate and my fingers are the foam, the, 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 the foam is being drugged like my fingers are, right? So it's creating... It's lubricating that? It's lubricating, but still, there's still drag there, right? I want a hydroplane, all right? I want to be on top and just have the polish interacting with the surface and not the pad. That's the key, all right? So that's why we, when we finish down a lot, um, it's always with soft black, GM black, whatever, whatever black you want to say is the softest, we'll finish it down with a, with a stiff pad every single time. Every time. You ready? I'm ready. All right. A little bit of both. Now remember, this, this cross is all lines. It's, it's all about knowing your product and what it does. My overlaps are way more, 90%, 75%. What kind of pressure are you putting on? I'm about five pounds. Uh, my, my, because we, we, we're not interacting with the paint. We, we, don't, we don't need, we're not doing anything but gliding across the top, taking that final finish. It's, it's, it's essentially just, I want to be four passes with everything I do. I want to be able to get through my cut stage in four passes. That way it's replicatable and it's easier to move through for me. In my mind, I'm like, four passes, this hand speed for the cut, this hand speed for the finish. You know, it's kind of like, it's just building those systems that I could just keep replicating and replicating. How, were you even watching the paint under the polish? No, nope, you... not in this case. Okay. But this is, and this is where the magic happens, right? We're just guessing at it right now, right? But I still think, because I know polishes in general and what type of polishes these are, that we can get to the finish just like that. A lot of clarity. I don't see any swirls left behind. I don't see any, really any micro marring to speak of. Um, you know, I think it looks pretty darn good. But this is YouTube. We know that cameras can play all kinds of tricks. So I wanted to give it a try. Uh, you know, about five to seven pounds of pressure and fast, brisk hand speed. You got about a 90% overlap is good, and just, How just many passes? four passes. I sort of butchered it this first time. I think I was too much in my head, going too slow, focusing on pad rotation. I mean, I'm stuck in my ways, right? I, I was also in my head trying to pick apart why this shouldn't work. Uh, maybe after the first, the first pass with a new pad, I would, I would prime it one more time. But then after that, I'm just using the residuals that are left over. I'm just using leftovers because they're the most broken down abrasive. And by the way, the same rules apply. We're not breaking all of them. You want to use your Tornador gun? <laughs> blow out your pad between every two by two section. He really emphasizes the fact that once you work a couple sections, you've got the oily residue in here. You don't need any reapplication of your M3. This is going to be something you're going to have to work with. See what works for you in the real world. I tend to apply a couple dots before every pass. But then again, I'm not Andy Be Cool. You know, when you're wiggling your scratches out, you leave a lot less of the DA haze. Wiggling out scratches, can you believe that? Anyway, it brings us back to this Mustang bullet where I wanted to show you this nasty black piano trim. What you want is a moist pad to work this around and that's gonna prevent your ticking. I'm gonna be doing this on speed six and the focus here is just on pushing this dang product around. You don't need a ton of product. I was told the more buffing liquid or polishing liquid you have on the paint, the more grip there is, the more chance you're going to get ticks, which was different than anything I'd ever heard before. Okay, translucent on the paint, a few drops on my pad. Let's get to work.
To be honest with you guys, I think I lost track of how many passes that was. It's crazy to me. The only other thing I want to tell you is you want about five pounds of pressure. So I was putting a little bit of pressure on there. I, you guys, I used to spend 20 minutes trying to refine every little tick. That was up, down, up, down, up, down, you know, easy peasy. The proof is in the pudding. Check this out. So you've used the Andy B. Cool method, you took Hawk Pro's word, and you're still seeing a couple ticks. Well, it could be a number of things, right? It could be pad cleanliness, maybe the pressure, the paint, whatever. I want to show you that this basic technique still applies. So throw away H9, throw away turning translucent. Let's say you've got your cutting compound of choice, but you take my word for it that M3 with a purple pad is the bee's knees, because it is. You're going to want to use basically the same technique. I've got four dots on my particular purple polishing pad. And I'm going to go to this dry panel, which I've already compounded. And it's the same basic thing. I'm going on speed six, whether you're using a flexed force rotation or a Rupes Mark III like I've got here. You're going to do the same thing. And it's going to be easy, and the ticks are going to be gone. <laughs> Speed six, I mean, there was a decent amount of pressure, right? Fast arm movements. Let's see how she wipes off. Pretty freaking awesome. And I'm telling you guys, I've worked this method for three months now, and it works incredibly well. But let's say you've taken Hawk Pro and Andy B. Cool's word for it, and you're still not getting the results you want. You bought the M3, you bought the purple pads, or you have a new tech who, this is gonna be too much for them. I love this technique on piano trim, right, by the way, because with piano trim, it's so hard to get it perfect, and I don't really look for perfection with piano trim. One last get out of jail free card, this will work almost no matter what, and it's the way Koch teaches it. I'm gonna teach you the way to basically ensure you're gonna get perfect polished results. It's gonna take a little bit longer than this, but it absolutely works. Check it out. Same basic principle applies. Um, Koch, the way I saw it in their video, they usually do a few drops like around the center. They say to use a butter knife to wipe it in. So I'll just use my gloved hand here. And they teach like very slow arm movements, but they teach speed six, right? It makes no sense. Why am I polishing on speed six? You prime your pad, two by two section, speed six, a little bit of pressure, slow arm movements and you're just gonna get perfect paint every time. It's just not as fast, but I wanna give you the full comprehensive scope of what I know. The clarity you get with this method, the speed six, a little bit of pressure, super slow is insane. It will work every time. 
I was just blown away by the fact that I could push this stuff around with fast arm movements, get around a black car that I'd spent so many hours compounding. It used to take me twice as long to polish it out. If you've done those overnighters, if you're in those trenches, you guys, I really highly recommend trying this method. Now, it's possible that other polishing pads will work with the Andy B. Cool technique. I've messed around actually with the Oberk firm, you know, medium cutting foam. We've been having really good success, and this is a little bit cheaper than the purple pad from Koch. So you might try some things out, but I would say the bare minimum is you want to get your M3 polish. I would try the H9 and work this system and see if it's something that you could standardize in your shop because it's really amazing. I told my shop partner, I told my business partner when I first found this out that this worked and I showed it to him and it was like uh, a kid on Christmas day and I felt like that ever since. So this is a game changing technique. Thank you to Andy B. Cool. Thank you to Koch Shemi. If you try this and you take my advice and you use it in your shop and it works for you, would you just let us know on YouTube or hit us up on Facebook because hey, I'm Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing and, and my goal is to make you a better detailer.